Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, we're going to do something different. In this video, we're going to talk about nits, ANSI lumen, and lumen. When I say nits for the projector, normally we don't use it. We use always ANSI lumen as a, you know, calculating measure for the light, and I made dedicated videos about this. But when you want to compare a projector to a TV, which many of you probably will do in any anyway, if you're wondering about projectors and TVs, but in this video, I am right beside a 135 to 40 inch image from a 3000 ANSI Lumen Ultra Short Throw Full HD projector. So this is a pretty big screen and right now it's in, I guess, Echo mode or Cinema Bright mode. Let's just check Bright Cinema mode. If I go, by the way, my laptop is not going to die, don't worry, but it's getting low. So I'm shooting this video at the end of the day. So if I go bright, it'll be probably 40% much lighter. And if I close the ambient light, which in the rest of the video, I'll try to do that. So I close the ambient light from here. So here we go. So the room is extremely filled with light and we got a good screen. So I'm going to talk about nits, LEDs and lumens and ANSI lumens. So basically I did another separate video. I will go to the bright cinema mode because in the bright cinema mode you can barely hear the fan noise of the projector. Let's close this one and try to open up a web page. The page and I'm going to share the link at the bottom of this video's description is quickandeasylighting.com. This guy I guess really explain the light as simple as possible because as a 20 year of professional photographer with a couple of studios it's difficult to explain light even uh, from people graduated from photography schools like uh, and art schools in in our business so let's start with explaining stuff comparing two units of brightness can be confusing when they are measured in different units and we got common comparison between lumens and nits which we're going to focus in this video so I'm going to dive down. What's the lumen? A lumen is quantifies amount of light visible to emitted from a given light source. So, uh, you know, the projector is creating light here and projecting to a wall or a screen like this. So we're going to measure most of the time here on the screen wise where the light goes and we have to do that. But normally TV is just giving you the light. So reverse the projector and if the if you are going to see the projector when it just creates the light from here then no problem but you have to watch from a reflection. So that's why things are different between the TV and the projectors. So why are the lumens are important because lumens are unit measurements that directly affect the brightness of your projector screen. And the brighter you go of course the brighter your image higher the lumen rating should be. So what's the nit then? The nit is unit of measurement that quantifies luminous, uh, luminescence of an object or how much visible light an object emits is being seen. So this is what we actually see. So one nit is equal uh, of one candela per square meter. Okay, so it has to do the light and spread of the light. The unit of a nit is uh, derived from the Latin word mitere, meaning to shine. So we also need, uh, understand the nit means shine, okay? Why the nit is important? The brightness of a digital display or screen, how it appears to a human eye, are often quantified in nits. So everybody right now, these days in 2023 and 2024 right now, is talking about 1,000 nits of TVs and 10,000 nits of TVs. There are huge amount of peak brightness numbers are just spreading around the world right now. And do we really need extreme nit levels or brightness? That's a question that may be another video's answer. But I don't think we need that much of a brightness. Right now I am sitting or standing right beside of a huge screen and the room is filled with light. I can read books here. You might be seeing me kind of like dark, but we can really talk here. This is a casual light setup because this screen bounces everywhere. So I have a light measurement tool and normally for the ANSI lumen and lumens, and we're going to talk about it, what we do is we put our measurement tools pretty full filled with white and I did a separate video about this and we calculate the light 
of lux level from nine sections. We divide the screen into a nine uh, rectangle sections and we're going to measure each section and we're going to uh, add one to another these nine sections values and divide it to a nine, create an average point. And when we have the average uh, lux value of the screen, we have to multiply it with the square meter size and we get ourselves ANSI lumen. So ANSI lumen doesn't go back and forth or change because when you get closer with your projector, your brightness will increase, the, your lux level will, will go high, but your screen size will going to, you know, quite a bit of small. So you're going to multiply with a very small number if you go very small. It doesn't change that. So if you're understanding me by seeing the, the formula on the screen, everything is simple. So ANSI lumen doesn't change, but the lumen value is uh, most of the time created value from the source, from the device. So that's why many of the companies just want to declare their lumen powers or lead lumen or bulb like a light source lumen power instead of ANSI lumen without calculating the screen size too much. They declare the LED lumen value. So most of the time, big brands depend on the ANSI lumen. So what is the difference between lumen and net? Lumen or ANSI lumens are used as a measurement of how much light is being projected, in this case, to a wall. Net unit defines the luminance of brightness of an object. So it's two different things, okay? Both of them are used to quantify the optical output, but lumens are unit of light created, whereas nets are the unit of measurement for how much visible light being seen. So that two different things. For example, our eyes is here, right? So the amount of light here, this is what I see. I have to look like this. Put the sensor in my eyes or onto the place of my eyes and measure it like this. But for the projectors, we measure like this. And it's going to go back and forth. So that for the TVs, most of the time, we put the device here like an eye and we measure like that. So measurement style is also changing but the logic you need to understand that and this is where it gets cooler and lumens to nits conversion is interesting although nits and lumens are two different units there are a lot to talk about and some of the things i not i might not be uh, perfectly explaining in this video if you do find this video quite confusing i'm sorry but the topic is not a uh, pretty easy topic to explain in a short time. So I, I think this is one of the best uh, sites and best text to explain it. That's uh, why I'm going on this. I didn't write my own text because it will be more probably difficult to explain. I'm kind of like a more nerd guy. So although the nits and lumens are two different measurements, there is a way to convert between two uh, to assist in a comparison between different sources brightness of a TV and the projector. So let's start. One nit is 3.426 lumens and one lumen is 0 0.29 nits. That's cool, right? So one nit is perceived as a brighter than one lumen. Okay, so lead lumens, 500 lead lumens, we means 146 nits. 1000 lead lumens means 292. And 1,730 means 500 nits. And 2,000 means 583. And 2,570, 750 nits. And 3,426 means 1,000 nits. So here it gets complicated, right? No, it's simply explained already. But I want to remind you something. This is a laptop screen. I'm going to get back to that because I'm going to tell you the reason. I'm playing with this laptop and this is new high-end laptop with Core i9 CPU and RTX 4060 GPU. And I'm going to put the projector from bright mode to a dynamic mode to show you the brightness levels. They are kind of like equal. This is around uh, 350 to 420, I guess, nits. I'm not, I didn't check before the video. But the issue is this laptop can be easily usable outside. And many of the high-end laptops 
offer 450 nits of power, 500 at up tops. So we are talking about brightness levels of a, a laptop that you could be using sunny day at a cafe or outside, okay? So I'm going to go back to the bright cinema. So this is how it feels. Think about it. This is a pretty good screen. You're going to use it anywhere you like. And this is a 135 to 40 inch big screen. And we are talking about same nit levels, similar light brightness levels. So this is huge. That's why people missing it out. Like when you talk about the black levels, okay, I get it. It's something different with a TV, OLED, QLED, AMOLED, whatever that is. And I've seen so far probably any kind of technology, just like you guys, you're visiting the shops and stuff. But I'm, I've been, I'm a tech guy over 20 years. I'm, I've been reviewing a lot of stuff. But the issue is this. If you think about it like this, this is a huge screen giving the same brightness of a monitor, proper monitor, which you can use outside like a cafe. And you're inside of a house and the screen is huge. It's going to bounce back and forth everywhere. So room will be in a lit position. Let me just get back to stop this and get back to the presentation again. It's important because the presentation is a white screen and this even lets way more than our already early video section. So in this video, I hope I made it clear. You're comparing it kind of wrong because this is four times bigger than a 75 inch TV. And when we are talking about smartphone brightnesses, I'm using S22 Ultra and some of the high-end iPhone models. We're talking about 1000 nits of light. And when we're talking about TV brightness with 1000 to 10,000 nits with the highest of highest prices with extreme price levels, even then 1000 nits if is a brightness of an iPhone 15 probably. I'm generally speaking, it might be more or less. But still, this is a too much of a brightness for a 115 screen. This is extreme. Don't think about it like a smartphone that you put out in a sun. You're in a house and you're not going to be affected with a full sun, open sun like an outside. So you don't need that much of a brightness, both for your TV and your projector. So when we are focusing with the highest of highest technologies, I'm not against it, you can buy it, but it's not going to be a needed light source. Like probably you wouldn't need that much, that amount of light in your life, but it's a tech, it's gimmick. And when you see it, you love it. But after a while, it's all gets to a point about your eyes getting used to. Like everything else in life, when you get used to something, you don't need more or less. You just need what you get used to. And if you are happy with your MacBook screen or iPhone screen in a distance, okay, you're going to be very happy around 3000 ANSI lumens of brightness projectors. Believe me, because they are creating a pretty big image with that amount of brightness. And if you want to learn more and see some examples, I did a cheap projector from LG with a 1500 ANSI lumen and I compared with my early 65 inch TV where the holes are right now. There was a TV, 4K TV, and the projector visual was up top and the TV was below. So I compared the side by side, a projector 65 inch and TV 65 inch. One is full HD, one was 4K TV. So watch that video and the end of this video around the corners and get back to me. That was a cheap projector and you wouldn't notice if it was a TV or not. If you have an ALR screen, you won't be having any problem, believe me. So if you have even an ALR screen like this, let me just get that out on the way. And we're always talking about wall in this video because of the brightness. But if you have also bright screen, ALR screens kind of like a dim little bit of down because of the angle of the texture and also they are using like little gray colors, gray tone. So brighter you have the projector, 
it's going to look like more like a TV. So I will play it again in the end of the video. So TV is TV, projector is projector. Let me just open up the room lights. Right now the room is highly lit. And I'm projecting not a screen size, but a wall size here. So to show you properly, I need to put the projector on. In the end of the video, I need to do this for you to see. This is getting pretty much, let's just go here. Okay, I guess I need to focus again. So this is in the focus. Right now this is, uh, let's just get it done. So this is about 92 inch screen and it's about 80, 80, 82 inch, I guess. Let's just put it on dynamic. And as you can see in a lit room, this is a TV kind of like brightness. So I'm not also lacking the contrast. I am better seeing better contrast because of my eyes. The camera might not capture everything, but as you can see, you're seeing a monitor brightness. This is a pushed out, by the way, this is the end of the monitor. So you can't go better than this, but I'm going to put it on a bright cinema. This is like a mid-level power output and we are not hearing the fans. If I go echo, I'm not going to hear any fan at all. So you have to be thinking, you're watching a huge screen. If you go extremely bright, it will also hurt your eyes in the long run. I'm not saying TVs are unhealthy. I might buy an OLED upcoming, probably. I'm planning OLED QLED TVs too, just for sake of the video content for the channel. And I wanna just show you the difference between uh, new TVs and the projectors too, but the focus is you do you really need that much of a power with the big size because bigger you go and if you go brighter again it'll be just like a looking from the light source here of a projector okay here I got probably 6,000 to 8,000 lux levels and if I look at this without a sunglass thick sunglass or darker sunglass, I will hurt my eyes. And you're looking at a big screen with 10,000 nits. I would probably, even if I buy an OLED, I will dim it down. And many of you probably projector levels will agree with me. It's also about getting something used to. When you get used to something, you wanna get similar results. And when your eyes is used to projectors, many of the TVs will come to you as an overbright screen. Believe me, blacks are good. When you see the proper blacks, like in a daylight, fully dimmable OLED new generation TVs, like my brother has a G1 OLED G1 LG, and I probably plan to C series or B series, kind of like a, for 55 or 65 inch in the upcoming season, but Focuses here, uh, focuses like this. When I see that TV, my eyes just don't like the brightness and the contrast overall. My eyes are used to this. So it's about also you're getting used to your habits, your eyes, your feelings overall. So don't focus too much of the TV commercials and projector commercials and screen stuff. But once you get used to stuff of a big TV, big screen huge screen you wouldn't want to go back and as we know the prices of 98 inch tvs are four times bigger than the 75 inch tvs so when you go above 785 inch you're going to increase the price hugely and with the projector you can go back and create 150 you can go front and create something like this so you can't do it with a tv and tvs are not portable they are heavy. These things, I, I just put it up here by myself, as you've seen in this video. So, a lot more to talk about, but I just want to remind you again, I will drop the link of that web page so you can understand the NIT levels. But don't forget your smartphone NIT, your TV NIT, and your projector NIT levels to understand them correctly. And your ANSI Lumen and Lumen values 
might be a little bit of, you know, declared higher from the brands. You can call it for high-end brands around 80-85%, like Epson, Sonic, BenQ kind of like brands, AWOL or for movie kind of like big brands with high-end projectors, uh, X, Kimi, GM, Go, you could include them. Like 80, generally 80-85% will be quite good. By the way, my TV is, uh, sorry, my laptop is closing. So this is the way to go, I guess. And if you want to, if you want to learn more about home cinema and projectors, just subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. I've shot this video around late 12, late at night, and I'm trying my best to teach you. And if you have questions, you can ask. If you have ideas about tutorials, guides, what people munder before buying a projector or a TV setup, I'm not saying the projector is the best. I'm not saying TVs is the best. For me, projector is the best because I'm getting used to it. And the screen size cannot be easily achievable with a TV. And I made a dedicated video why projector is better than a TV. You can go back and watch. And I also made another uh, uh, video about why TVs are better than projectors and when. So I know all the positives and negatives, projectors and TVs. I'm not a fanboy of any of them. But for me, the engagement of the big screen size is something different. When some people see this on a live at my house with this setup, they realize, yeah, you don't really need extreme brightness of an OLED and QLED. Like, this is a 92-inch screen and 55-inch TV or 50-inch TV. We got four 50-inch TVs, four TVs here. It doesn't look big when I'm just standing beside it, but it's pretty big. So you have to understand this. Size is very different. And the price compared to size is kind of like advantageous. But this setup... If you want to go high, like 4K projector and proper screen, it's not going to be cheap. But it's going to be way cheaper than 4K, same size. If you buy 120, and if you look at above 100-inch TVs, 4K TVs, with a 4K projector and a screen setup, oh, you can't catch it at all. I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and comment, ask questions. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.